Hello and welcome to Only in Sedona for your core one flow. As the name suggests, we're going to work in your core, but first we're going to warm up. So please get up and join me. We're going to start with our gentle Tai Chi dynamic stretch movement warm up to make it safe for you to move. After that, we go into our vinyasa flow portion to work our strength, our cardiovascular ability, and a little neuroplasticity. Then we'll do our restorative section where we get deeper into the muscle tissues for deep flexibility and healing, closing with our guided meditation. If you're enjoying this video series, please hit that bell. Please join the community, drop us a comment below. We're going to talk about some healing tips today. We're going to talk about food allergies and food sensitivities today. So think about that. Think about uh, what are some foods you're sensitive to and how did you find out? Let's take this to the other side. I want to grow a beautiful healing community here where we can all share our healing knowledge and tips. I know what I know, but I don't know everything. It takes a village and everybody is unique and different. What works for me may not work for you. So let's share our ideas. Let's grow together. And just close your eyes if you want, pushing away any negativity, pulling in all that positivity, Smile, close your eyes. Look forward to this 30 minutes of self-care just for you. You need this time to reignite and reunite with who you are at your core. And let's bring these feet in. And let's just do some nice easy squats with some arm and finger rotations here getting everything nice and lubricated and ready to stretch in our vinyasa flow. Real nice and easy. Give me two more right here. Gently easing into our flow. And finishing our warm-up with just a few Tai Chi twists to wake up that spine. It's your body's lifeline part of your neurological system, a critical part. So gently wake it up. And let's come to the mat to begin our vinyasa flow. Stand tall in your mountain pose. Knees are soft, pelvis is tucked, shoulders are back, invisible string lifting you tall. Bring your hands to heart center to set your intention for your practice. A good one to set today is I am at my core, strong, beautiful, patient, caring, and wise. And let's begin. Inhale, take a nice deep breath. Look up as those palms touch. Stretch yourself an inch taller. And then ever so gently, walk it down real nice and easy into your first forward fold. And I'll show you a few variations. We'll stay here for several breaths. You can ragdoll your arms. Just let them drag your mat. I like to cross my arms here and kind of tick-tock. I find that's a good way to wake up my lower back. If you have any lower back sensitivity, this is a good option for you. You can also wrap your arms around if you want. Bring them up over your head. Play with it here. This is your time to tune into your body and listen to what it needs and heal it. So just play with it. Find that spot where you're happy. Give me one more breath in this forward fold, please. And as you exhale, bring your palms to the ground, bending your knees if you have to. Step back into your plank. Nice long line from the top of your head down. 
We're going to make our chaturanga a little easier. If you're feeling strong, you can go down straight. But if not, bring your knees to the ground and keep those elbows tucked in as you come on down. And then come into your first Sphinx or Baby Cobra of the day. If your lower back is a little sensitive, you might want to be in Sphinx right here with your elbows down. If you feel a little bit like you need a little more, bring your palms right under your shoulders. Keeping those elbows bent, come on up. You can look over both shoulder. Pick the variation that works best for your body. Be gentle here, easing into your day. Look forward. Bring yourself up into all fours. Take a second to tuck those toes. Lift yourself up into your first downward dog of the day. And let's adjust this too. So bend your knees, lift your fanny up a little higher and press it down. And then just go ahead and walk out your dog. Nice and easy. You can unite your breath and body here as you draw that awareness inward. Inhaling and exhaling with the motion. And then take it down. Hold here, take a nice deep breath, inhale. And exhale, walk yourself forward. We're going to come to a seated position, so just sit down on your mat. Extend your legs, come to lie down. We are going to do a modified Navasana. So what I'd like you to do is lift your shoulders, head and neck off the floor, and then your feet while keeping your lower back against the mat so that it's nice and safe. Hold here for a breath. And then just relax down. We're going to do that three times. So again, come up into that baby Navasana. Hold for a breath. And then relax it down. One more time, little baby Navasana. Hold for that breath. And then come down. Bring your knees into your chest. Hold on to your feet, rock back, rock front, and come back to all fours for our bird dog lift. Lift up that right arm and the left leg and take a breath. Ah. Release. Take that on the other side, left arm, right leg. Take a breath. Ah, do that one more time each side, please. Bird dog lift, take a breath. Ah, and once more on the left. Bird dog lift, take a breath. Ah, bring it down. Tuck your toes. Push slowly back into your down dog. Take a breath right where you are and then take a nice easy stroll surrendering to that forward fold when you reach the top and rolling 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 all the way up inhaling as you reach the top palms touch exhaling the heart center let's get that on the left a little faster yogi inhale Looking up as those palms touch. Exhale, surrender, forward fold. Inhale to your beautiful flat spine. And exhale, step yourself back into plank, bringing your knees down for your chaturanga. Inhaling to that baby cobra or your sphinx. Exhale, press yourself up into all fours, tuck your toes, 
and come into that down dog where we'll pause for one breath. <sighs> Walk yourself forward to sit. Bring yourself down to your mat. Let yourself fly all the way back and come into that first baby Navasana. Lift, take a breath. And release. Two more times. Lift. Take a breath. And release. Last time. Lift. Feel that core. Take a breath. Release. Sit down. Bring those knees in. Grab your feet. Rock and roll yourself to all fours and adjust for your bird dog lift. Right arm, left leg, take a breath. And release. Left arm, right leg, take a breath. And release. One more time each side, right arm, left leg. Release. Last time. Bird dog lift on the left. And release. Tuck those toes. Lift into your down dog. Inhale where you are. Exhale, walk it forward. Surrender forward fold. And then roll yourself all the way up. Looking up as those palms touch. Exhaling the heart center. Let's do that whole flow one more time on each side. Inhale. Look up as your palms touch. Exhale. Surrender forward fold. Inhale to a flat spine. Exhale. Walk yourself back to plank. Bringing your knees down through your chaturanga. Inhaling to your cobra or sphinx. Exhale, come in through all fours. Tucking your toes. Pressing up and back. Into that gorgeous down dog. Take a breath. Ah. Walk yourself through to sit. Lay yourself down for the baby Navasana and lift up for the first of three. Take a breath and release. Ah. Second one. And take a breath. Third one. And release it down. Bring those knees in. Grab those feet. Rock and roll. To all fours. Bird dog lift. Right arm, left leg. Take a breath. <sighs> left arm, right leg. Take a breath. <sighs> Same thing, other side. Lift up. And release one more time. Lift up. And release. Curl your toes. Come into your downward facing dog. Inhale where you are. Exhale, walk it forward. Surrender, forward fold. Bring it all the way up, 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 up. Looking up, palms touch. Exhaling, heart center. Last time on the left. Inhale, up. Exhale, dive into forward fold. In 
inhale flat spine exhale walk it back to plank knees down chaturanga inhaling to that cobra or up dog exhaling back through all fours tucking your toes and coming into that down dog take a breath Walk yourself forward to sit. Roll yourself down for our little Navasana. Lift up into that baby boat. Take a breath. And relax it down. Lift up into that baby boat. Take a breath. And relax it down. One more baby little rowboat. Take it down. Bring those knees in. Grab those feet. Rock and roll. Come to all fours. Bird dog lift. Right arm, left leg. Inhale. And release. Left arm, right leg. Inhale. And release. Other side. Inhale. And release. Last time on the left. You're doing great, Yogi. And release. Tuck those toes. Press up to your downward dog. Walk yourself forward to that flat spine before surrendering forward fold. Peeling yourself up with a smile of appreciation for who you truly are deep inside. Cause you did it. Bring your hands to heart center and thank yourself for that work. Let's take it down to our restorative section. We're gonna come into our Malasana squat here. Just bring your feet, I'll turn front so you can see. If you have some blocks, you might wanna come down. Otherwise, you're just gonna bend your knees. Your elbows press against your knees. If you have blocks, you can sit on them right here. Hi, Poppy. And then gently release. Beautiful, beautiful advantages of uh, shooting on location is we sometimes get puppies and that's always wonderful. So let's go into our, um, our seated Matsy Andrasana twist. Take this here and cross one leg over. Lift that arm up. Your back arm serves as a second spine and just take a little twist. And what I'd like you to do here, as you come into our restorative section, is start to focus your awareness on your breath. So inhale nice and smoothly for a count of four. Give me a little pause. And then exhale nice and smoothly for a count of four. Focus on that breathing. Relax and smile. So if you are among the many who have food sensitivities, what are your sensitivities? How did you discover them? I'll share with you my story here in a minute of how I, after years and years, I found a way to ease my fibromyalgia and arthritis pain by finding what I was sensitive to. Let's uncross here and let's just take this on the other side. So bring that other leg over. This leg crosses. Your back arm is your second spine. Lift nice and tall. You can just hug here and look back. If you have the flexibility, take that elbow and look behind you. 
Food allergies and food sensitivities, probably you know they can be very severe, thinking of peanut allergies, but even other types of allergies can be just as bad. And with me, I always felt that it was something I was eating that was causing some of my problems. Not in my brain and my heart, unfortunately, but with the other, the brain fog, the widespread body aches, the gastrointestinal issues. And I never gave up, although I was kind of made fun of. At one point, they thought I had celiac disease, and I, my symptoms did improve when I stopped eating wheat. But then sometimes when I would eat wheat, I would be okay, so it wasn't that. And let's unwind here. Let's take it down for some supine stretches. And so come around, spin around on your mat. Support yourself behind your legs so you can lift yourself down here really gently. Bring your heels in so that you can touch them with your hands. Take your right leg, cross it over your left, reach underneath, come into a supine pigeon. And I had two fortunate things happen. Now one, I had already done multiple elimination diets and I had my list of safe foods. I knew what I could eat, but I was noticing I was still having inflammation on my cheat day. I do the 80-20 thing where I, I eat healthy six days a week and one day I have a cheat day. And I would get up to 10 pounds of weight gain from inflammation and there was no way it was due to calorie intake because my calorie intake did not change so I knew it was something I was eating and I narrowed it down to it either had to be an oil or it had to be a combination of two foods in which case I would have been in big trouble and release let's get this on the other side sun cross and cross it on the other side reach underneath and pull back and one of my amazing beautiful friends who is a genius she's a medical researcher she's incredibly intelligent why she hangs out with a brain damaged dummy like me i'll never know but <laughs> she does and we're really good friends and she confessed that she had an allergy to canola oil and lo and behold <laughs> i eliminated that from my diet and um I only tested it once after eliminating it from my diet and I never will do it again because my symptoms came roaring back with a vengeance that was ridiculous but um, it really stopped that. I, every week I was, my weight was fluctuating 10 pounds and I was getting, you know, with the five, if you have fibromyalgia, the brain fog is the worst and then the widespread body aches and it would also make my arthritis kick up so my lower back, my knees were hurting and a lot of that eased up when I got this toxic substance and I'm not saying canola oil is toxic I'm saying it's toxic for me, it's just like peanuts peanuts might be great for you, they're great for me they might be deadly for, you, for other people um, so don't give up. Um, I'll drop some links in the comments about, or in the description, some good links for how to do an elimination diet. But if you have tips on how you discovered your food sensitivity, please, please, please share them in the comments below. And let's release this here. Let's get some, some uh, supine twists here. So go ahead and extend your left leg Bring your right knee into the chest and then just cross it over your body, looking the opposite direction, extending that other arm, feeling a great stretch through that core that we worked so hard today. And you'll find if you do have a food sensitivity of any kind that does influence your inflammation. I know that if you have an inflammatory disease like rheumatoid arthritis or Crohn's or UC, you have to be so super careful with your diet. Share with us your tips. How did you discover it? What works for you? 
because everyone's body is unique and different and what works for me might not work for you and that's why I want to build this healing community here let's bring this back and let's just switch legs bring the other leg in extend that right leg now and twist to the other side it really takes a community it takes people sharing knowledge and we don't have enough of that in the United States I don't think so share your knowledge share your wisdom below let's make this a place where we can learn and grow and beautiful yogi as we're getting closer to that closing meditation what I'd like you to do is get even more aware of your breath making your exhales gradually twice as long as your inhales so let's bring this in let's close with legs up the wall as we regulate our breath even more so just bring your knees into the chest extend them up and just prop them if you have a wall or if you're doing the restorative part in bed prop them against the bed the bed frame and with your next exhale, instead of a count of four, make it a count of five. And then six, seven, and eight. Until you're inhaling for a four count with a little pause. And exhaling for an eight count. What this does is it taps into your parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest. It tells your body to calm down. You can use your two to one breathing anytime, anywhere to help induce a sense of calm. And with that said, let's prepare for our closing guided meditation. Give yourself a big hug of appreciation and self-love for the beautiful person you are at your core inside. And then let it all go as you fall out into that final resting pose and prepare for our guided meditation. Okay, beautiful yogi. Please just take the next few moments to focus in on your two to one breathing as you attempt to clear your mind. Understand that thoughts will intrude. This is natural and normal. Don't criticize or bring any judgment towards these mental interruptions. Just note each one, then let it go, like letting go of a thought balloon, returning once more after observing it to focus on your breath. Who is it that you are at your core who is it that you want to be who is the person you dream of becoming sit for a moment and meditate on who this person is realize that while you might not have the power to immediately change your external circumstances you always have the power to manage your reactions to it. Your actions and reactions make you who you are. Make friends now with your highest self, the self you want the world to see. Resolve to become mindful of whether or not you behave in alignment with your highest self as you go through your day. Internal conflict 
and discomfort occurs when you behave in a way that goes against your higher nature. As a result, you feel depressed. You beat up on yourself. Please know, beautiful yogi, that self-criticism isn't the way to go. You deserve to love yourself. You deserve all the love in the universe. You are, in fact, a creature born of love. It is in our very biology for love to be the creative force driving everything in our lives. So love yourself right now, beautiful yogi. Love yourself today by acting in alignment with your higher self. Take comfort in knowing that real change doesn't come from any monumental effort you must undertake. Relax. All you must do to bring about the changes you want to see is make small, daily decisions that align with your highest self. In doing so, each time you raise your vibration, you start to attract more of the positivity you want to see in your life. Acting in alignment with your highest self takes time so please be patient with you. Honor each positive decision you make to act in a way that resonates with who you are at your core. Remember, you are a being of love. Sit now for a few more moments with your highest self, feeling the emotions of kindness, peace, humble service toward others, gratitude that resonate with the positive, beautiful creature of love that you are. Namaste.